What's up, everyone? Welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. So it appears that PC gaming is causing a rift in the PlayStation exclusive ecosystem. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is a game that, for some strange reason, has entered the spotlight, especially now that we got to see that you know, the PC port is live. And I actually promised that I was going to test this whole thing out to see if the statements that were made around the time this game was about to be released for the PS5 are accurate or if there was some clever marketing done behind all of this. I'll spoil it for you. My conclusion is they probably oversold this particular paradigm and they ought to be careful at Insomniac because this is one studio that's actually very guilty of making absolute statements. Like you can't necessarily predict the future. So even if you want to make a statement that you want to use for your marketing, be very smart about it to leave room for you know, the possibility that your statement may be deemed incorrect by factors changing. Now, what all is going on? The magic SSD of the PS5. Apparently, back in the day when this game was being marketed, it appeared the news articles were going all over the place saying that Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart could only happen through PS5 SSD. If you read a lot of the articles, the very big challenge you're going to see is, first of all, you're going to see the articles and their titles, but then many of the articles actually did cite uh, you know, the developer who actually said this in a video. So here is the citation itself. And I think that's probably going to be one way to go. If you want, you can go like other people have done, like this gentleman over here who did some investigation and actually watched the video. You can watch a video for yourself, but I don't think the video is really going to help you because it's very easy to understand what was said here. So this is what was said. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is a game that utilizes dimensions and dimensional rifts. And that would not have been possible without the solid state drive of the PlayStation 5. The SSD is screamingly fast. It allows us to build worlds and, pro and project layers from one place to another in near instantaneous speeds. It is an unbelievable game changer in terms of we can now do gameplay where you're in one world and the next moment you're in another. So look at the technical mentions here, near instantaneous speeds, wildly fast, SSD of the PS5 and so on and so forth and saying not been possible without the solid state drive of the PlayStation 5. Now, there are many contexts that you can interpret this stuff in. You can say, well, maybe they were referring to the comparison between the PS4 and the PS5 because they are an exclusive or were an exclusive studio at the time. So that could make sense. Maybe compared to the PS5, this developer was saying that, OK, when you look at the way both consoles are built, the PS5 is better. I think that might be the simplest way to actually go ahead and actually chalk this up. But the reality of the situation is this. Whenever you're making comments about technological advancements, you ought to be very careful. I did two you know, tests with this with two of my builds. Now, these builds are production builds. I use them for game development and all kinds of interesting stuff that spans beyond gaming. And so, yes, this is not the typical rig for most gamers, but I will game on it. And sometimes I will do some, you know, testing like this. And I realized that the change in regard to, say, an SSD, the old school kind, like the flat kind, right? The 3.5 one uh, or 2.5 inch, sorry, compared to an NVMe did not necessarily seem like it was a big deal when you were powering them with really decent machines. So here are my tests. I did one with my 4080 build uh, on 4K with my Ryzen 9 3900X, 32 gigs of RAM, Windows 10, and a PNY CS900. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a flat SSD like this, right? This is the old school SSD that we used to know and love before the NVMe started to get more and more affordable. That's the problem. The NVMe got affordable just recently after, you know, production had actually ramped up and so on and so forth. Then I ran another test. I created, you know, this, this, this was the first, first one that I ran, actually. Uh, the second one was a 4080. I created a separate file for it. And this was in my Ryzen 9 5950, 32 gigs of RAM. I used the Evo 970, which is the Samsung SSD that was kind of, you know, the forerunner at the time. I think the Pro was the, you know, big brother of this. But, you know, a lot of people didn't buy the Pro. A lot of people bought the Pro. That was their business. I wasn't buying the Pro. But this is the speed of that SSD at the time. Now, this speed of the SSD is actually half as fast as the speed of the PS5 SSD, the NVMe that's actually in that PS5. So note that I use my 4090 Windows 11. And on looking at this whole thing, ladies and gentlemen, I don't necessarily see where there is 
any single issue in regard to transitioning. There might be one stutter here or maybe a slight delay here that you'll see, but I've never played Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart before, so I don't even know. Look at that, that one stutter. And I think that's basically a game loading thing. So if you notice again, let's go ahead and look at it. Just put on your forensics lens with, with me. As Ratchet gets into the Rift, the very first time he's in the Rift, he moves into it, and then right here, as it's about to spin, there's just one tiny stutter that you're gonna get. I think that is the PC's you know, logic basically loading in the world, and you're gonna see the exact same stutter when we actually move to another SSD, which is actually really interesting overall, because this is kind of like the big thing that they were talking about. So he changes worlds here, uh, you know, goes through that, you know, rift dimension and so on and so forth. And so this is actually very interesting. So all through, I don't see any, you know, stutters here at all, like not a single hitch as this is going through. And the frame rate is actually quite interesting doesn't drop below, you know, it doesn't drop even to 60 at all in the whole time. Maybe, one, I don't know if you even dropped any, you can look at the frame rate yourself. And it is another transition here at the beginning of the game where, you know, he goes through and then that's pretty much it. So this is for the 4090 run. The 4080 also has something very similar like the 4090, but the 48 is running in 4K. I have DLSS on. And when we look through again with that transition as he goes through the rift, Let's take a look at it real quick, but this video is actually slightly different. Okay, so uh, the guy goes first, and then Ratchet goes through, and then you're going to notice where he's spinning again. Boom, that same spot right there. There seems to be something loading, and these are two different computers with two different hard drive types, and you notice that this particular hitch with all of the juice and power that these PCs are running on seem to be there. So this is a configuration thing from the PC, not necessarily, in my opinion, speeds that you could actually really differentiate. So if we actually start breaking it down, you will realize that Insomniac made an absolute statement, which is a very dangerous thing to make. And this is when I actually posted on Twitter and said, you know, I wouldn't say Insomniac lied, and this is my conclusion, but they used clever marketing based on the available knowledge that was out here at the time. And it's hard to conclude their intent. And this is why you have to be careful with absolutes. Just like they said, Spidey was never coming to PC. Many of you may or may not remember, this is a response that they actually gave to somebody and said, it will never appear, this is in regard to Spider-Man, on Xbox or PC, it is a permanent PS4 exclusive, uh, exclusive. I think they were going to say published, or they said publisher, by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Even in the face of all of that, I remember, I never even saw this tweet, I remember just being on my own, I was not even on Twitter at that time, I made a video back in 2018 where I said why Marvel Spider-Man should be on the PC, and I made a discussion which was based on empirical data about the number of PC gamers and US gamers overall, and how I thought Sony was leaving money on the table, and it made sense that they actually did bring their game to the PC platform. Now, many of you already know that Spider-Man on PC, not only one Spider-Man game, but multiple Spider-Man games have become a reality when it comes to this particular conversation. You can't necessarily say that, oh, this is a never or this is a defin you know, definitive or whatever you may call it, because at the end of the day, you're going to look you know, really silly if you don't you know, leave room for possible errors or for possible changes in things along the line. So what do we need to conclude from here? I know there's a console war going on. It's nice to grab your popcorn and watch. That's the kind of person I am. I like when the drama unfolds, but at the same time, you have to be really reasonable. These guys are trying to sell their games and trying to sell their consoles, but the foundation within which they sold these consoles, as I've always argued, is a foundation based on marketing that really did mislead a lot of people. People run around there thinking that, you know, when you have a special SSD in a PS5, it really is going to make a big difference. It doesn't really make a difference, in my opinion, anyways. I've never played it on PS5, so I wouldn't even know what the transition is like. Maybe it's better. I think I've seen videos, but I can't even remember when I do a comparison. Perhaps it's better, but at the end of the day, it doesn't change nor break the experience. Now, people have also gone ahead to test this with even less powerful builds. I remember there was a YouTube channel I saw, or they were posting tweets here from a YouTuber doing it on a 1660, using an RTX 2060, and even some other GPUs, but... Again, PCs process games very differently. This is a very, very interesting paradigm. And again, I think these consoles have just come full circle. There's no need for us to start to say, oh, the PS5 does this or whatever it is. 
you 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 have what you have and your limitations are your limitations that's just exactly what it is maybe if i had a similar hard drive at the same speed as the playstation uh, 5 i would probably have a smooth experience but then many of you remember digital foundry also saw that there were a few hitches when you were transitioning through transitioning through the world and even that hitch that i showed you guys in this video is one where digital foundry actually you know did experience because I think it's just the way the PC loads the world of the game. It's just, you know, something really interesting. And they call it, I think it may also be called something uh, di direct memory or something like that. Uh, PCs have a different way that they process data compared to the way consoles would do it. PCs have other background tasks that are running. Uh, I'm running this game, uh, you know, on my, you know, production builds where I'm using the studio drivers. There are all kinds of different, you know, circumstances within which PC gamers play. So we have our conversations differently. And I recommend that a lot of folk out here that are talking about this be very, very careful who they're listening to. Look at the metrics, look at the analysis, look at the benchmarks on PC and kind of see for yourself. Because if you go listen to, say, people that are talking about this stuff like Reforge Gaming uh, or people who really lean one side to the PS or to the Xbox side, you may ne not necessarily get the full details, nor may would you be able to form uh, you know, a more neutral uh, conclusion at the end of the day. But by and large, this has reduced my trust in, again, studios whenever they're marketing their games, because at the end of the day, it seems like they're going to say what they see to be beneficial to selling their titles. It's not necessarily what is the exact fact in that regard. Now, the next thing would be to probably try to put an SSD like this, uh, you know, $70 SSD that I used to test it. Um, the 970, uh, sorry, I said the 970, the CS900, which is uh, the old school M uh, NVMe, uh, NVMe SSD in a PlayStation 4. Now, let's see if the PlayStation 4 can actually run it with that SSD and what the experience will look like. But I don't think it's going to happen unless you take like an old school build that is somewhat comparable to a PlayStation 4 and then put in an SSD and then see if it's actually going to run, you know, an SSD SATA. That's probably going to be the next test that someone's going to pull off. But I don't really have the time to start, you know, digging up parts and, you know, trying to do something like that because, yo, uh, I, <laughs> I have a life. But anyways, this is my opinion so far, my conclusion. Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. I uh, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the video and uh, hopefully we can continue this conversation and maybe even make a continuation video. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out.